a very important topic Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna has raised and he'll be discussing about that. That we will come to that and we are reading from the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, page 466. Before that, as usual, let us pray. Tavokatham Ritam Tapta Jeevanam Kavivi Ritam Kalma Shapaham Sravana Mangalam Sri Madatatam Bhubi Grinanti E Bhuri Dajana So last time uh, we were reading the Siddham Krishna came all the way from Dakshinesha to meet Pandit Shashadhar Tarka Churamani. But this is a very special, uh, we can say the characteristics of Siddham Krishna. Whenever he found someone as a spiritual person, or studying scriptures, she was interested to meet them, to understand how far they have progressed. Not to fathom, not to judge their, speech, uh, their intellectual knowledge, but the advancement of the spiritual knowledge. How far they have advanced in spiritual knowledge. Sri Ramakrishna's whole life was as we can see, that he started giving the advices on spirituality after finishing his long 12 years sadhana. It was only, we can say, from 1850 to 1886. So that was the period or maybe 1870, that was the, we can say the, from 70 to 86. That was the time, 16 years, 15 or 16 years. And then, naturally, 15 years is nothing. 16 years is nothing. He was eager to see the people are taking up the proper path to realize God and not loitering unnecessarily in intellectual things. So that was the thing. First he came to Ishan and from there he went along with others to meet the, this learned person. Now in the discussion he said, He who has commission from God never runs short of wisdom. Sri Ramakrishna himself never attended any school and he is meeting a person we can understand the how great knowledge that he was having because Tarka Churamani, the highest uh, the form of the Sanskrit learning he got and this Sri Ramakrishna when talking to him he is mentioning that he who has a commission from God never ran short of wisdom. He never said knowledge, he said wisdom. The knowledge is a lot of information, but the wisdom is a completely different knowledge, it goes to the root of it. And from this only simple sentence we can understand that there is God who is all-powerful and all-knowing. The last Sunday, we had a meeting and there, the Sri Ramakrishna, before Sri Ramakrishna, how was the Hinduism? We lost faith in God. The God was nothing but just some imaginations. Majority of the people, as because they were under the torture of different type of things. So they wanted to go beyond that, so mystical power, or magical power, they were all searching for those things. Now here we find Sri Ramakrishna is very specific. If God is blessing you, then you will have no dearth of wisdom. 
that means it proves that god is there and he is all powerful all knowing second he may he manifest through words of one whom he favored the god is manifesting through words when shami vivekananda addressed the sisters and brothers what happened the history says that 7000 people stood up clapped just because of the language the sisters and brothers the word no the power of god the god is manifesting through the words that is very important and that this type of sentences words teachings instructions again and again bringing back the only one thing that god is there have faith in god and in page 467 we find to pandit he is telling therefore i say to you dive deep into the ocean of satchidananda when sri ram krishna going and meeting the ordinary people he is telling only how to serve the parents and the good relation with the husband wife the Uh, the how to raise the family one should earn uh, that to maintain the family but most of the time at least in the master mahesh met him in 1884 and in 1886 sri ram krishna passed away this two years accounts that we find in the gospel and that to sometimes master mahesh used to go not all the time he was there even then we find that the most of the time sri ramakrishna is visiting the educated people learned people the people in the high society why because if they are changed they will influence many others that was the very interesting way the god's mission to spread once again to bring back the true life in the hinduism he is taking because time is short and he has to do something which will change the whole the psycho of the society how it is possible he is going and meeting vidyasagar mahasaya a very learned person who was accepted by the whole society keshav chandra sen was accepted by the whole india so he is going and changing them this is a, a wonderful discussion one gentleman has written i i have not gone through all the lines there he is mentioning how sri ramakrishna actually broke the whole that movement new movement brahma samaj is started with some uh, raja ramon rai and got the very great force under the leadership of the keshav chandra sen but the keshav chandra sen he realized the truth is not only the people who are following and we are giving the lecture a great social movement but what about the realization of god we are talking about god not understanding what we are talking about who we are talking we don't know so did sri ram krishna changed the keshav and along with that the whole movement was changed so that those words or teachings help people that is what sri ram krishna is telling therefore i say to you dive deep into the ocean of satchidananda satchidananda sri ram krishna is again and again mixing the word god mother satchidananda paramatma all these are same why we will hear from him with great conviction with after realization he is mentioning that nothing will ever ori you if you but realize god this is the proof that one person has realized god nothing will ever ori you if you but realize god as long as 
The fear is there, worry is there, and faith is not there, realization is not there. So when that happens, have to understand that a person is a realized person, no worry. Because he knows that whatever is going to happen, happen for the best. And in the Upanishad, we just remember that word, Yam Lapva. After realizing, after getting that, Cha Aparam Lavam Manyate Na Adhikam Tata. Manyate, they never consider anything after the realization of God, anything greater. No. The God is the final. After realizing God, there is nothing after Him for which one will hanker. There are innumerable paths. And this unity in diversity, in our fall banquet, this time we had that theme, unity in diversity. Different religions, they came and they were speaking on that in their own way. The whole theme was unity in diversity. And what is the Hinduism? It's this. Sri Ramakrishna is telling, there are innumerable paths leading to the ocean of immortality. Just before that program, when I was in the corridor, over talking over there, a group of ladies, three or four, so I was telling this, these people have come, they will be speaking about this. Why you are inviting these people? Sanadar Narva is the best. Why you are inviting these people? This is not the attitude of the Hindus. Hindus are open-minded. They are always eager to learn. Always eager to accept the best thing. And they believe firmly that any path, any path, whatever it may be, will lead to the same goal. When the great disciple of Sri Ramakrishna, the Narendra Nath, afterwards Swami Vivekananda, he was criticizing to some extent a, a group of people who used to worship one gentleman uh, as God, as the living God. Karta Bhaja, that was the, a group of people. That time it was very prominent. Mostly the, uh, the ladies and after the widows, they used to join in that, illiterate ladies and they used to worship in that way. Karta is the God and Bhaja, but in place of God there is someone there. So in the society, people never liked the, that. And according to the young boy, 16, 17 years old, and Narendranath was also criticizing, Sri Ramakrishna said, why do you criticize them? Even if they are sincere, thinking that that person will give me liberation, that will happen. The God will help that particular person who is thinking in this way, because sincerity is the only thing to reach God and nothing else. The different type of scriptures, different type of mantras, different type of teachings is of no use. Only sincerity. Faith and sincerity. Where is the faith? God is there. And then I am going to reach over there. I do not know the path and I don't care because God will surely take me to Him. So that way He is innumerable of the ways that lead to God. If you are sincere, you will attain God. If you are sincere, that is the only criteria and you will attain God. Sri Ramakrishna is mentioning like this and he said, My child is addressing to the Pandit, add a little more to your strength. Practice spiritual discipline a few more days. Then he said, Can a preacher ever lack knowledge? Therefore, I ask you whether you have received any commission from God? Hajra, <laughs> of all the things, Hajra certainly said, 
Oh yes, he must have it. And isn't it true, sir? He was asking the Pandit. All are sitting together, so the discussion is going on. Hasdrav was appreciating the Pandit because he was a learned man. Naturally, we as even today, in the, in, at our time, if a known, very learned person comes, we think that he must be having all that. Now, Sri Ramakrishna is going and meeting a person who is talking about God and spirituality. So, obviously, he wanted to know whether he has come, got the blessings of God, commissioned by God. Hasra Sahan must be, otherwise, how he is so popular. But the Pandit says, and host also uh, is also in that, he said, Commission? No, sir, I am afraid. I haven't received any such thing. Pandit is truthful. And that is the characteristics of Brahmana. They never tell lies. He could say, yes, I have got it. But he never said lies. He very clearly, he never tried to hide anything. He said, commission, the blessings of God, the command of God to preach. No, sir, I am afraid. I haven't received any such thing. The host who was actually, who invited that Pandit, so naturally he was feeling that I have to protect my guest. And in those days the rich people, that was one of the competition and among many other things, they used to invite the holy people, they used to keep them in their houses and invite the other people to show, see, this holy man, he is with me. So I am also that way, spiritual, like that, maybe. So he is telling, he may not have received the commission, but he preaches from the sense of duty. The sense of duty means to guide the people who are groping in the dark. So in, he is doing that as because he is learned, so he is doing it, he is teaching it. Never understood what Sri Ramakrishna really meant. So Sri Ramakrishna, what will a man accomplish by mere lectures without the commission from God? The whole lecture cannot help. They will be, sometimes, some people, they will like it and afterwards they will forget it. Another person comes more forceful, so that again, that will go away. Then a high government official from Barisha once said to me, Sri Ramakrishna is telling, how people, they think of, Sir, if you begin the work of preaching, I too shall guard my lines. If you are preaching, I too will join. The one person told me, Swamiji, you are giving initiation. Tell me that mantra, so I will also give mantra to others. <laughs> okay. That is also possible, but I cannot do that. So this is the way people are thinking. It is nothing. Just read something and pray. And I have seen some of the professors also. At the beginning they were good people, nice people. But then you know, the professor intelligent, so studied that. Then afterwards when he was there explaining, people liked it. And slowly, slowly in India, this is one thing that anyone speaking about God or spirituality or philosophy, immediately they will accept him as a holy person. And slowly, slowly that, and that gives the, the ego, I am different from you, holier than thou. Whatever the good merits he acquired, that also gone. So this way it is dangerous, very dangerous. Long back, one Brahmin boy, who is to read the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna in Bengali in a very emotional way, and people used to like it. So he were invited in different houses to go and read that. And before slowly, slowly he started, before reading he would close his eyes and meditating and as if praying to God and then while reading or after reading he will sob and cry as if he is so much touched in that. And that created more 
emotion among the listeners. And then one day, when he came to me, he used to respect me and love me. Till now he does. And he came and he was telling, Maharaj, they are asking me to this way. Am I doing the right thing? I don't know. You are maybe there, they will be benefited, but you are losing your merits, whatever you have. Don't do that. Reading gospel, just read. Don't show up in that way. And inside your room, when there is no one, when you are reading gospel, if you feel that those words are touching your heart, that brings tears to your eyes, good, no problem. But not before others. That will be a dramatically that you are telling, that will be dangerous for you. So this path is truly no dishonesty. That is exactly what Sri Ramakrishna said. But majority of the people do not understand this. They don't like it also. And that is the reason we find the path of true religion, very few will come to trade. Very, very few. Unfortunate. But that is the truth. So here, Siddhartha Krishna, he is telling in this way that one officer also, he said, I can't do that. So I say, a worthless man may talk his head off preaching, and yet he will produce no effect. But people will listen to him if he is armed with a badge of authority from God. One cannot teach others without the commission from God. A teacher of men must have great power. So, this is what, what Sri Ramakrishna is. A, someone was telling how I will understand who is a, a really a true preacher, true guru, true good man. How will you understand? So, these are the things. The person who is teaching for others is going out to teach others. Only, only one effect that he loves those people. So he is going to spread the philosophy and nothing else. So that is what Sri Ramakrishna is telling. Then he is giving an example. This is Chaitanya Dev, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was an incarnation of God. How little is left of what he accomplished? Not to speak of lecturer who preaches without authority from God. The great personalities come, they change the whole thing, even then. How much people accept that? Sri Ramchandra, Sri Krishna, Buddha, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Jesus, they all came and they preached and they were commissioned by God. Even then, Avataras, even then. Why people are behaving like that? Because they are karma phala. Most of the people, I saw that Sunday, the one young, uh, the lady and the gentleman, they were outside. They didn't enter to listen. They were waiting for for the lunch time, so they will let they purchased the ticket and they came, but as because in the first half the spiritual talks were going on, they were not interested to listen, so they were outside, loitering and passing time. Can you imagine? And their mothers and some senior people they came, they were inside. So someone introduced and they told, now we are waiting for that. I told, wow, you can go and just listen, nothing. And if you hear something, then it will, the debate will come in your mind, whatever is telling good or bad and not right and not, or it is right or wrong, all this you can, but no. And after the lunch, the lunch he will enter and after the lunch the dances are there, song, then that will enjoy. They have reached so close, but not even, they are educated people, not that they won't understand. But the patience only for half one hour to listen to this, it was not there. Why? 
they were so close even they were not why because the karma phala the samskaras that is the great thing and sri ramakrishna is telling that way is a beautiful song he is quoting dive deep o mind dive deep in the ocean of god's beauty dub 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 rup sagare amarman rup sagara the god's beauty what is that beauty of god this whole world and so many ways gods are manifesting that is the beauty the moment you realize that there's also you can understand the god and a good person god in a bad person god in the hero god in the villain so each and every place god is only playing if you can understand that beautiful and that is the beauty if you descend to the uttermost depths there will find the gem of love and what is the ultimate of religion love l o p e that some of you may can the same the love this love means it's not the small love that i am having only for my kith and kin and my society and my religion and my country no that's not that love is a love that embraces the whole world without discriminating anything that is the ultimate of religion what is god l o v e that love the love we are already having we are having love for it. but do i love for others i need not to go and help them maybe that i am not capable to help them physically or monetarily or any other things but i can pray for them i can feel for them we have seen the expression of love that affected in the life of swami vivekananda in one night the some of his brother monk guru bhai he got up supposed to go to the toilet and he saw the shami vivekananda pacing up and down on that corridor so what happened is anything disturbing you troubling you so you can't sleep then shami ji said how could you sleep all the people they are now dying there's so many they are going to bed without a morsel of food there is no one to look after them so that emotion concern for the others that is called love and that love is religion the another time this vivekananda met another brother disciple shami turiyananda and turiyananda was eager to know whether he has realized god or not then he said i don't know whether i have realized god or not but my mind has become so broad i can stay i can accommodate each and every one even if there is a personality like devil i think i can also stay with him so that love the pure love is called religion the master is continuing one does not die if one sinks in the ocean of immortality one does not die what does it mean not physically spiritually in the ocean of immortality means he becomes immortal himself the god is immortal and he goes and marches with the god or the brahman which is one and without any changes that being goes and marches with the source that it becomes immortal then he is giving an example god is the ocean of bliss tell me if you want to plunge into it just imagine there is no seed in a cow and that you have become a fly then he is talking with narendra his beloved disciple now tell me where you will see to see the seed up the ocean or the is telling suppose that in a container that that seed up is there immortality and he is asking the young boy narin suppose you are a fly 
and when we will see it to see that see that narendra answer i will see it on the edge of the cup and stretch out my neck to drink because i am sure sure to die if i go far into the cup then i said to him but my child this is the ocean of sachidananda there is no fear of death in it this is the ocean of immortality only ignorant people say that one should not have an excess of devotion and divine love how foolish the when i am loving god what comes to me bliss fearlessness the bliss because i am the one that is enjoying all this and fearlessness because nothing is going to happen to me nothing is going to happen to me means what sometimes some people they make mistake in the kumbh mela in india they sometimes they mention like this the greatest show on the earth millions and millions of people they go only to take a dip in the ganges holy ganges thinking that by that way all their food De- desires will be fulfilled and they will be immortal they won't die this is all conception but what is this immortality not physical but immortality means they are becoming god they are merging with the sachidananda they are becoming one with the brahman brahma vid brahmai bhavati in sanskrit they say the brahma vid is becoming the brahman itself that drop is mixing with the ocean becomes the ocean itself so it's not fear of losing one drop but becoming ocean and that fearlessness and that is called the knowledge what is god realization fearlessness ov 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 shami vivekananda again and again be fearless be fearless it doesn't mean that you have to take out the sword and fight with others no it is not that type of fearlessness the fearlessness means the understanding the truth that i am not going to be destroyed because i am atman in reality i am the atman the body that i am putting on it is an ignorance i am not so if somebody says that you are your shirt what will happen I will all every all of us will laugh what is it it cannot be i can change this any time the similarly i can change the body any time and uh, now when we were children we were all the time guided by our parents and the relatives no where are those people father mother uncle aunties relatives friends all known people we are far from that what is happening we have got another group of people they are concerned for us they are our friends in the same way we are living without the father without the mother we are living so that gives this and now if you go and say a young boy or a girl and it will be terrible conception for that little mind oh my god I don't have my father my mother I cannot imagine that condition but when that condition comes it is okay for him or her because that time by that time he has already developed to that experience the same way it is the spiritual experience that takes us to in such a way that one is not afraid of death why there is nothing such as death nothing such as death it's only changes and changing of body and mind so if that is so that constantly in the mind so we can go and then sri ramakrishna is telling there are innumerable paths leading to the ocean of immortality the ancient essential thing is to reach the ocean it doesn't matter which path you follow this is unity in diversity that's why sri ramakrishna is considered as many 
as the samannaya devata he is the god of unity before him that idea was there no doubt but the practices were not there he practiced in his own life and he propagated he showed and that is why ramakrishna mission they accept each and every one sometimes some people they will say why are you worshiping the jesus or the buddha why you have kept their images over here the symbols are there why should you do that you are a hindu hindu means all this hindu means if you take one and go to that as your chosen idol that is also hindu and when the hindu the true hindu they accept all but at the same time they have one pointed devotion to their chosen idol so that is called ishta nishtha ishta their chosen idol so their nishtha my devotion is there but at the same time i am not hating others sri ramakrishna is teaching us and we are the followers of that great philosophy that sri ramakrishna has given how can we say no we don't want others that cannot be so sri ramakrishna is telling innumerable are the ways that lead to god if you are sincere you will attain god now he says that this part is very important he says what is gyana yoga the gyani seeks to realize brahman he discriminates saying this not not this then he says not this not this he discriminates saying brahman is real and the universe illusory that is the famous dictum brahma satya jagat mitha this is going on then what is karma yoga it aims to fix one's mind on god by means of work sri ramakrishna is giving the definitions that is gyana yoga karma yoga what is gyana yoga you have to constantly judge the temporary and the permanent constantly and then only you can move otherwise you won't be so then the universe uh, karma yoga to aim to fix one's mind through work and that's why they say whatever work you do do with the devotion i am doing sometimes i we are just cleaning the rooms and houses and sometimes people they come and they do some voluntary work in the temple and the shrines also when they are doing constantly they are thinking god will work on this god is coming to see i must be very careful not as the pinch of dirt should be there anywhere the god is coming my boss is the god that should be the attitude if the god is my boss and i am under him so i should be very careful that's called karma yoga constantly thinking in that way when we are offering anything to some any person we must be very careful the best thing that you are offering sometimes just nothing that we cannot use then you give it to others no that is not karma yoga karma yoga is that devotion the best thing that you have to offer and offer with great humbleness i am giving to my god that was some our swami bireshwarananda ji was hearing from our brother monks who came here and the whole when we were traveling from here to ganges this two hours we had a lot of discussions after a long time when we were in the training center we were immature but now after so many years when you again met of course individually we met here and there in different programs but this time exclusively without any other things so in the vehicle when we, we all the five were going we were discussing about different things so this thing came the gyana the karma the bhakti the devotion that should be in everything in the gyana yogi he should also be devoted devoted to his own self the atman that i am going to get 
and the Atman is always pristine. Nothing can contaminate Atman. And all these things that is coming, is coming on the mind and mind is not Atman. And somebody is praising the waves of joy coming up, we have to sustain that. Somebody is criticizing the waves of sorrow is coming up, we have to sustain that. No, it is not, it is not, it is not. The joy, the sorrow, the prashamsha, the ninda, nothing can affect me. Constantly, so much devoted. And constantly, even in the sleep, Swami Vivekananda said, even in the dream, you have to go on using your sword of discrimination. This is bad. Even in the dream, if somebody is wrong, something wrong is coming, immediately you have to say no. So this is called the Jnana Yoga. In the Karma Yoga, Swami Vivekananda introduced Karma Yoga, particularly for the devotees, because they are all the time in the world of work, engaged in different responsibilities. So when they are working, if they think that whatever work I am doing is uh, doing for God, that cha will change. So Sri Ramakrishna is telling, its aim is to fix one's mind on God. Karma Yoga is in the page 467. By means of work, its aim, aim of the Karma Yoga is to fix one's mind on God by means of work, by means of work. And that is Karma Yoga. If a householder performs his duties in the world in a spirit of detachment, the Sri Ramakrishna is teaching. That's why I always say that this is a Panchamu Veda. It teaches so easily. Only thing if we can understand it and accept it and practice it, we will realize that God. It's not me that is telling, the God himself is telling. If a householder performs his duties in the world in a spirit of detachment, surrendering the results to God and with devotion to God in his heart, he too may be said to practice Karma Yoga. So when I am giving it to God, that means I have a conception of God. The faith in the presence of God and I am giving it to God and that is the devotion he is practicing that. And what is Bhakti Yoga? It is to keep the mind on God by chanting His name and glories. In the Jnana Yoga, constantly thinking of the path of knowledge that is discrimination and discrimination between what? Between the Atman and the rest. Whatever is there in the world, everything I am giving up, Tyaga, and I am constantly going to that consciousness which is Atma. And in the Karma Yoga, everything that I am doing, Yat Karoshi, Yat Asnasi, Yat Juhosi, Dadasi, Yat, Yat Tapasasi, Kaunteya, Tat Kurushya Madarpanam, in the Bhagavad Gita, whatever you are doing, even the breathing that we are doing or blinking was doing, Every action, whatever you do, give it to me. Yat karoshi, yat asnasi, yat juhosi, yat dadasi, yat. You are giving the charity and that also I am giving to you, my God. Whatever I was having, this little I am giving you as donation. So that is called the Karma Yoga and the Bhakti Yoga, constantly going on repeating the holy name of God. That is Bhakti Yoga. But friends, one thing is common in all the three. What is that? Faith in the existence of some holy thing which may be called as Brahman or Paramatman or God. So this is the, and for the Kali Yuga, now Sri Ramakrishna is guiding very clearly. For the Kali Yuga, the path of devotion is easiest. 
This is indeed the path for we of this age. Here we must mention the, when we say the karma in the traditional way karma means yaga yagya. Karma kandi in the Veda the karma kandi the performer of work doesn't mean that they are going and helping others. Rather they are performing the yagyas and they are completely the yagya means why we perform the yagya I like to go to the heaven for that special yagya I want my progeny son daughter for that is I want to kill my enemy punish my enemy for that yagya the different type of desires that that is the yagya but now when Sri Ramakrishna is talking about the karma, this karma to, in the modern language you can say philanthropic work. Helping others without expecting anything. That is exactly what Swami Vivekananda introduced. If you read the explanation of the Bhagavad Gita, the Shankaracharya has explained the jnana and karma samachaya Samuchaya means the combination of the knowledge and the karma. It can never be. The karma only can give you a little bit of spiritual uplifting, but you must have to have the jnana, the knowledge that you are one, and not two, that only will save you. But when Swami Vivekananda, very categorically he says, through unselfish work, we must understand this word unselfishness. Through unselfish work, you will reach the same goal where Buddha reached by his knowledge, Christ by his prayer. This is the famous quotation from Shami Vivekananda. And that gives the totally different view of Shankaracharya. Because Shankara was mentioning about the karma kandis of the Veda. And Vivekananda is talking about the karma that makes you completely different personality because you are thinking for others. Why? Not because of the body or the mind, but they are also the manifestation of the same God. That's Atman is manifesting through those bodies. That's why he declared a completely revolutionized statement. The downtrodden, the illiterate, the poor are my special object to worship, Swami Vivekananda said. It's not that the other people are not, but these people, as because they are, they cannot help themselves. So he is telling. And then it's very important that we find over here. Therefore, Bhakti Yoga is prescribed for this age. And then he says, this is really important. Bhakti Yoga is the religion for this age. But that does not mean that the lover of God will reach one goal and the philosopher and the worker another. I have marked this. So this is the speciality of Sri Ramakrishna, clarifying everything so wonderfully. Bhakti Yoga is the religion for this age, but that does not mean that the lover of God, that means Bhakti, Bhakti Yogi, will reach one goal and the philosopher and the worker another. No. So all goals are the same, all are going to the same goal. We call it in different names, that's all. Then it says, it means that if a person seeks the knowledge of Brahman, he can attain it by performing the path of bhakti too. God, who loves his devotee, can give him the knowledge of Brahman if he so desires. That is why Sri Ramakrishna sometimes he said, Ekankar Gyan Ved Vedantake Chariye Gache. The knowledge that came within me in Sri Ramakrishna that has surpassed the knowledge of Veda Vedanta. Whatever that knowledge that we have learned from the Veda and the Vedanta, this is nothing but the realization. 
And here we find a person, the Sri Ramakrishna, who has surpassed even those things which is not there in the Veda. It doesn't mean that we are hating Veda, discarding Veda, but a little step ahead. What is that? Through bhakti, through any path, you can reach to that goal. I want to see your images the devotees praying. Bhaktana Anukam Partham Brahmana Rupa Kalpana. And now I don't want to see you in form, I want to realize you in every being. That also God gives that. One of his disciples, he went to Sri Ramakrishna and said, Sir, what do you want? I want to see that Atman in every being. Then he said, it's very difficult, but you will get it. That is from his Sarudanandaji. All through his life he was devoted. And he was doing so much of work. He wrote a voluminous book by selling which he paid back the loan that he took for to construct the house of mother. Mother should live in her own house. When the mother used to come to Calcutta, she used to live in different devotees' houses and naturally a different family, different type of situation. And we are monks. Mother was the head of so many monks and devotees. Wherever she was, the many people are going. That particular family may like or may not like. Saradhanandaji understood that, but he was a poor man, how to help? He started writing the book, the great book that he has written about the life of Sri Ramakrishna, very authentic. And there in the beginning he has mentioned, I have not written any word which I personally did not realize. That is the main thing. And he sold those books and with that money, slowly, slowly paid back the loan that Bhagavad Mayavadi, that small part that he purchased. Now, of course, slowly, with the help of the devotees, it's expanding. Now, Sri Ramakrishna's these words surpasses everything. Through the path of devotion, even knowledge you can get. Why? Because God is all-powerful. If you say, show me your the Brahman, what is Brahman? God will show that, if he likes. By realizing the Divine Mother of the universe, he will get knowledge as well as devotion. You will get both. In Bhava Samadhi, you will see the form of God. And in Nirvikalpa Samadhi, you will realize Brahman, the absolute existence, knowledge, please. In Nirvikalpa Samadhi, Nirvikalpa Samadhi, ego, name and form do not exist. He is talking about himself, his own realization, Sri Ramakrishna. We know that after the, he was praying to the mother, mother Kali. And then he realized that the mother of the universe, not in form, but is the knowledge that came in the waves of light everywhere. Then afterwards, when he understood that this is the knowledge and he was so happy, he thought, what's the, why should I leave now? For whom? Then the injunction came, no, you have to leave for the betterment of others. But he was not ready because the moment the mind comes down to this earthly level, there will be conflicts always. Then he said, Bhav Mukhe Thaka. So you stay in the border of this. So sometimes you are with the form and then you merging in the without form. And that is why we find Sri Krishna. Now he is talking with people and he is seeing God. He is running after the mother and who as a small little girl just playing with him. And Sri Ramakrishna is crying, Mother, don't do that, you will fall. You will get hurt. And he is taking the Ramachandra for bathing in the Ganga. All oh, these, those who have read that biography of Sri Ramakrishna, the wonderful stories. Don't think that these are all cock and bull stories. These are truth. 
Many things are there in this world which we cannot explain from the view of the modern day science. Notice now there are there, but still we cannot explain it. That power is there. So this is what Sri Ramakrishna said. Thank you friends, thank you for coming. And this we should not forget. And today whatever we have learned is the great teaching. Through any path, we can reach to any goal and all goals are the same. And there are many, many different ways to reach God. So we should never become narrow-minded to say my path is the best and others are bad. That is not Sri Ramakrishna way. Let us chant this mantra and conclude. The God is the perfect, perfect embodiment of the eternal truth manifests itself in various forms to help mankind. And the incarnation of the Supreme Lord who is worshipped by all. Niranjanam Nityam Anantarupam Bhaktanakampa Dhrita Vikraham Bhai Ishavataram Parameshamityam Tam Ramakrishnam Shirasanamama Om Shanti 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 Hari Yo that's a Sri Rama Krishna Arpanamastu